good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Ingram Jones, and we're doing a special tonight. Bayoric TV Boxing Special. It's Frampton Quig. This is the week of the fight, and everybody's got an opinion. I have in the room with me Ramsey from Team Fury. I have Asgar from Team Fury. I have Michael Redis. Am I right, Michael? Yes, sir. And... I think I've got Cameron in the room. I think he'll come in at some point from the boxy insight. So I'll start with Asgar. Asgar, give us a little, uh, little bit of what's going on with Team Fury at the moment. Any updates? Yeah, I'm just waiting on um, Huey's opponent. You obviously know that a lot of people are backing down, um, first agreeing on certain terms and some of them pulling out. <clears throat> Tyson, obviously, waiting on venue. Just waiting for to get Huey get Huey fighting on the twenty sixth of March. Going to be a fantastic fight, you know, a step up in class and show the world what he's really about. Basically, excuse me, assist, all systems go now. Right? Everyone's going to be busy and then take the world stage. Talking about Huey Fury, uh, rumor is Ustinov. Is this true or is this rumor? Well, I, I've read it from uh, Peter's tweet, so whatever Peter says goes. Obviously, enough has been put forward. Whether it's been agreed or not, that's between Frank Warren and um, Peter Fury. Once Peter puts it out, then we'll know for sure. The problem with what Peter says is he can say something and, and certain people get greedy and what they offer first and then triple. And, you know, Peter's not going to be held to ransom. He's a fighting man. It's like you either want to fight or you don't want to fight. If you do, good. If you don't, we'll move on. They'll still keep Huey busy and eventually they'll have to fight. Okay. Ramsey, let's hear your point of view in terms of Huey Fury, the development, things moving forward, because you are also part of Team Fury. So good evening, Ramsey. Evening, uh, Ingram. Yeah, um, Huey is doing really good, to be honest. Uh, he's uh, up in Holland uh, in uh, uh, K1 Glory, heavyweight champion of the world, Rico Verhoeven's gym. So, um, yeah, he's doing good up there. Um, uh, so far, so good. Um, you know, he's uh, training hard and... Uh, uh, keeping on top of his game. So since the um, obviously he had a lot of health problems earlier in his career, and he he's put some good strong performances on. Where is he in terms of strength? I mean, in terms of like man strength and youth strength. Where would you say he is on that at the moment? Are they are, are you guys noticing any physical changes yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, he's uh, he's, uh, he's getting stronger. Obviously, he's turning into a uh, you know just developing into a young man now. So. Yeah, the powers there. The obviously, is is uh, is uh, growing up a bit as well now. So yeah, he's coming along. He's coming along great. Okay, can great, I great. can I, can I just say something there? Go ahead. At Huey, when he was eighteen and you know turning nineteen, he was hitting with phenomenal strength. There's a lot of world ranked fighters, you know, even a lot of top domestic fighters, but he sparred and they they felt the power. And this was a kid. That was probably firing at thirty percent, forty percent. Is it wasn't much of an illness; it was more of an analogy. Right. You know, his body was reacting bad to certain things like calcium and things that we didn't know about. And then obviously Peter looked into it, and it turned out you know certain proteins he was allergic to. And this was a kid at thirty, forty percent, unbelievable power. But now he's twenty-one. He's, his father's taught him how to you know just his size and use it to your advantage. I'm dreading to hold the pads for him now, let alone then. I'm dreading. Just imagine Ingram and, 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 and Asgi. Just it's amazing how uh, a kid like that at, uh, at that age who, who was, who was uh, not 100% and still performing in the ring, just outstanding, I think. You know, um, I mean, he had, he had this allergy was keeping him keeping him back, but he never uh, he, he never held back. He kept on carrying on, carrying on. Uh, and, you know, it's motivation, dedication just speaks the word. Now, I'm going to say something that might sound quite controversial here, but <clears throat> I've always thought that Huey Fury would end up being the better fighter between him and Tyson for a number of reasons. Reason number one is because Peter's had direct contact with Huey from the start as opposed to him taking over Tyson's career <clears throat> when Tyson, uh, after after the Pycheck fight, if I'm, if I'm correct, after taking over from the Canadian trainer. The second thing is, 
the sparring that Hugh Fury's had has been on the back of Tyson Tyson sparring. So I'm thinking to myself, he's had the opportunity to learn um, quietly in the background without there's much pressure on him. And thirdly, I think that if you look at the two characters, Huey seems to be one that's just very steadily, quietly getting on about his business, learning the trade, watching Tyson, watching things that work and things that don't work, and, and not having the same PR machine behind him. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Potentially, with Huey Fury. Uh, is that Asgi, you go first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like we said, um, Hugh keeps away from the line. But look, listen, there's only one Tyson Fury, yeah? yeah? At this stage, he's on a phenomenal level. Huey Fury's getting there. And, you know, he needs to be tweaked, but he will surely, with the right guidance for Peter, he will be not just a champion, he'll be a name. He will be like, you know, Vladimir holding on for years, defending them titles. You see where I'm coming from? Mm. Because... Is, you know, with Tyson, he's grafted the hard way. He's had to adjust. And like you said, with Peter, he's had Huey from the start. So Peter's got a lot to work on with him. And to be fair, like you said, whoever Huey's fought, Tyson's, well, whoever Tyson's fought, Huey's fought. And a lot of people won't tell you, Huey's done very, very well. He's held his own. He's put a lot in their place. But, you know, it's what happens in the next two fights is going to determine where Huey's at. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because I know that Peter was saying that there was going to be two eliminators. He was going to do one eliminate in February, March, and then another eliminator when Tyson fought. On the card, yeah. On the undercard. That's what Tyson, Peter said to me, and that was quite a few months back. So he seems to be good to his word so far. It's just a matter of the opponents pulling out. Absolutely. You know what it is with Huey? He's, he's probably one of the most avoided fighters because he hits that card. He really is that good. With Tyson, you know he's good. You know, with Tyson, the thing with Tyson, he's self-promoted, he's loud, you know. He talks a great fight. You know he's going to give a great fight. You know everything about him is the razzmatazz. But as Huey keeps away from all that, he's serious. You know, he, he's like, uh, who can I put him like? You remember Lennox Lewis, where at that time you had Riddick Bow, who was loud, who was brash. You had yes. Lennox Lewis, who was quiet, and he was... You knew Lennox was a far more superior in terms of technicalities and the ability to understand a fight. Yeah. Just no, don't get me wrong, Tyson's just the same. Tyson is by far, you know, he's, but, but Huey, he's just his own man, two different styles. Oh, mate, I can't wait till the world sees what he's really about. Omar Khan, are you in the room? Omar? No? Can I also say this as well? Yes, I am. I am, mate. I'm I'm just in an underground station, so uh, you might hear some background noise. Okay, fine. No problems. Ingram, I can say this because I was there. Yeah? Yep. And I don't really like to talk about people, you know, what stays in sparring (coughs) is kept in sparring. Yes. But this guy that David Hay fought, Mark DeMora. The the, the dominator that got dominated. (laughs) He got dominated well, by a listen, guy called Digger listen. before Tay fought him. I think Mark DeMora did well lasting that long. <coughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Uh, <coughs> Huey Fury sparred Mark DeMora when Huey was 18 years old. With a jab, and I'm, I'm just no joke, with a jab sent him flying out the ring. And he, had, he got sent on the plane the next day. He refused to, He refused to fight Huey. Then he's telling us he was two, he held two versions of the world title. He's ranked 12th in the WBA. That's how good Huey Fury really is. And I was 18 years old. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I've heard that. I was there. I was there. I've got video footage. <laughs> I, I was there. <laughs> I've seen world-class operators, uh, and they will tell you how hard, how good, how how his boxing brain works in the ring. People won't realise he will not just be a world champion. He will be a legend. He will be in the Hall of Fame. Mark my word. Trust me. And with Tyson Fury, he will be there as long as he wants to be. He's that clued up. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. We'll mention this because people listening will, will actually crucify me if I don't ask the question. 
Anthony Joshua. They keep putting Anthony Joshua and Hugh Fury in the same room together. Um, yeah, I'm glad you asked that question, and I'll give you a straight, honest answer. Go ahead. Looking at Anthony Joshua, yeah? He's mm-hmm. like a juggernaut, isn't he? Well, that's if you want to look at him that way. I don't quite No, let's just go way. by the, the, the public's perception. perception of him. Yeah. Yes. He's a juggernaut, and we've been through all this. We went through this with Ken Norton. We went through this with George Foreman. You know, we've been through all this. It's history repeating itself. Frank Bruno. Huey Fury will walk through his punches if if AJ lands a shot. That's if, and I'm telling you, Huey will be too fast. It shows you that AJ will be can be rocked. If someone like Dillian White, and this is no disrespect to Dillian White, Dillian White can bang. But I think once Huey hits AJ, he'll wobble him and he'll school him and he, it'll be like the rumble in the jungle. Remember this. Definitely. He will be like the rumble in the jungle and he will stop and drop Anthony Joshua. Yeah. You know, remember this. To be, to be honest, uh, Asgi, I think uh, Ingram, I think uh, AJ, I, I don't think AJ can last more than seven rounds and Huey will take him into deep waters and probably end up drowning him there because no way, he, no way. I think AJ can do twelve rounds solid. See now, people, people would now turn around and say to me, you know, you've got two guys from Team no, Fury. No, can, can, can I just can I just back my chat? One more thing. Okay. Right. Let's talk about pedigree. Right. Yes, Anthony Joshua is an Olympic gold medalist. Well, so was Audrey Harrison. Yep. Yes. Now let's all talk about the Olympics. You know, it was gifted to him. Let's not kid ourselves. Agreed. Anthony Agreed. Joshua was gifted the Olympic gold medal. You take nothing away from him, he's got it. Full credit. But Huey Fury was first to become world youth amateur champion. He made history, something that none of these guys have achieved. Am I right? Correct. So yeah. when we're talking about pedigree, I will put all my life saving on Huey Fury stopping Anthony Joshua. That's how much I can back it. Anybody wants to match it, just let's talk. We can sit down. I'm prepared to put my life onto it. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. and I'll always support AJ, and I'll tell you why. Because he's British. Mm. And like Tyson said, or Huey said, we want him to keep winning because it will generate so much interest when whoever he steps in one of the Furies. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I don't think he'll beat um, Charles Martin. I, de- I generally don't think he would. I don't either. I've said this already. But I said, it's like the same thing I said about when George Groves met Padu Jack. And people say, oh, it's just a foregone conclusion. It's not a foregone conclusion. And can I just also say, Stavern will beat AJ all day long. And they will all keep him out of the game now because he's a genuine threat. And can I just ask you a question, Ingram, if you don't Go mind? Go ahead. As, as a boxing man yourself, mm-hmm. if you as a boxer, you would want to fight the world's best. You don't want to be gifted a bloody double IBF title that was stripped off the man that beat the man. Of course you wouldn't. Who would want that? It's like saying, oh, um, we'll make you world champion because it's like the Regan Dogs situation with Frampton and Quigg. We all know who the super champ is. Come on. Mm-hmm. They stripped his belt to make one of these look, look like the super champion. It's a farce. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like me taking my uh, belt off my trousers and giving it to Asgi. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that's supposed to mean. But no. <laughs> it's that not mean made of paper, paper, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> yeah, my mind is, my mind is normal black leather belt. <laughs> Last year, this is about the IBF belt, lads. So, like, my work belt holds more weight, and I work work in zero gravity. <laughs> okay. Also, also this. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. Peter Fury said, "We will take AJ tomorrow." Yeah. Have you heard AJ say? You've heard obviously you've heard Eddie Hearn say it. he's trying to say anything, but when shit hits the fan, what's he saying? We're not ready. Listen, Eddie Hearn needs to stop trying to cash in on an AJ. He's not ready. He's not on the same level. How many fights has he had? 15? Who's he fought? The best opponent he's had. And, and it's a shame that I even mentioned his name. Audley Harrison. Come on. <laughs> Shot Kevin Johnson, probably. Kingpin. 
Que the, man that, the man that was bribed for. Yeah. I still think the Kingpin performance is always questionable. Kingpin looked like he was looking to retire anyway. He and, was promoted. And he's well. retired since then, so I mean Shout out, lovely. What can you say? What can you say? Right. We're here. We're talking Frampton quick. We're gonna get into it. Cameron, you with us? Yeah, I'm with you, but uh, uh, Ingram, I don't wanna uh, go off topic, but I've got one question for Ascar relating to Huey Fury, is that all right? Go ahead, no go problem. ahead. Fire Feel away, free. Sir. Fire away. Alright, so in my opinion, Ascar, Huey Fury and Peter are in a bit of a tricky situation. And the reason I say this is because I spoke to Peter not long ago. I think it was around September. And I think this was just after he beat Andre Rodenko. And uh, Peter said that he wants to take his time with, with Huey. And rightfully so. He's only 21 now. And, you know, he's got a long, long left in the sport. But the problem I see is you look at the heavyweight division. And outside, the, there's five heavyweights right now, in my opinion, that are cut above the rest. And if you take the rest out and you take them out, the heavyweight division is pretty much leveled out. So, Huey Fury, Peter doesn't want to put him in with the world champions right now. But in my opinion, it's got to a point where Huey's too good to be fighting sort of fringe level. You know, Rudenko was a good sort of operator. I thought he beat Lucas Brown, who's about to fight for the, for the, for the Panamanian regular belt. And Huey Fury didn't lose a round against him. So, are they, do you not think that they're in a kind of a situation where they're going to have to maybe fast track a bit no, quicker no, than no, 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 no. It's an absolute fantastic question. I'm glad you asked this because it just lines up really, really neatly. Right, okay. That you says he beats Rodenko, yeah? Yeah. Quite comfortable. And we all know Lucas Brown was gifted the decision against him. Lucas is fighting Chagev for the WBA interim title, am I right? Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so it shows you if he's ready for that title, surely that's the route Huey Shaw should go through. And as you know, he's put in an offer against Ustinov. Who's also fighting the King Kong? Am I right? Uh, not too sure. Ortiz is fighting Thompson. <laughs> King Kong. Well, he was putting. Thompson, the, yeah. He was. It was put in the super whatever where they'll find the ultimate champion, won't they? The WBA champion. Yeah. So why not go down that route and fight the winner out of Lucas Brown and Chaga? Surely, if, if he beats Ustinov, he must be in line to fight the winner of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Kiri, in my, in my opinion, beats. You know, draw in the headway. So, I, I, you know, if you put him against Lucas Brown, I don't think he loses a round against Lucas Brown. I don't think he loses a round against Usnoff if that fight happens. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like, Huey's yeah. very young. But let's look at domestic level. Let's, let's go back to domestic level. Who's there for him in domestic level? Obviously, Tyson Fury is out of the picture because they'll never fight. He'll beat Chisora. He'll beat AJ. Well, AJ wouldn't even fight. He'll beat Dillian. You, who else is there for him uh, to fight? Let me jump in there. David Hay was offered, or the question was asked about David Hay, and they said there was the risk and reward. Now, David Hay is the one guy I think might cause Huey problems because of the speed and the power. Okay, Ingram, now look at a David Hay's last fight, yeah? Yes. Do you see the picture where Shane McGuigan was trying to lift him up? No, I didn't. Well, look carefully when he lifts him up, and look how fat he is. Look at his legs. He's put on too much weight. Now, he's a natural cruiserweight that's blown up to look. He's put on too much muscle, which will only give him two to three rounds maximum. Yeah, that's what I... The he gas, especially with that, that much more muscle, he's going to gas uh, even more, you know. Exactly. And with David Hay, it was shown against Tiger Thompson. He hasn't got the gas, and he will run out of steam, and he'll get hurt. And also, with David Hay, he's a farce. Who's going to invest their money... He was on Dave TV, which shows you, you're a bomb. Yvonne you're Dave. a good-for-nothing bomb. And I watch my language because I know England's got some good viewing. And I don't want to like say anything bad. But David Hay, you cannot trust. How many times has he pulled out a fight? Do you not they feel that we want to fight him and expose the fight? Just coming on that one. Um, on uh, Cameron's podcast, uh, on the Boxing Insight, that we had Peter Fury on, uh, not Sunday gone the Sunday before, and uh, mm. hit versus... Uh, Huey actually came up. One of the lads asked him a question, and then I came into it and said, "Surely, Peter, you'd be worried about the pullouts with Huey." And he actually he started talking about it, and he got to the end of it. He was like, "Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually entertain the fight. I wouldn't have anything to do with it, to be honest mm. with you." Mm. As Scott, it's quite. I mean, obviously, nothing's been announced yet. When obviously you're quite good with the Furies. I, I follow you on Twitter, and it's very entertaining. 
Um, <laughs> so um, when, when can we, I mean, I don't know if you can give us any insight into when we can potentially hear an announcement finally about Huey because he's having trouble getting any heavyweight in the ring. I actually yeah. wrote a tweet about him yesterday because he wrote a tweet saying, is there any good websites to watch films? And I replied saying, I think you need a website to find a heavyweight we'll actually get in the ring real. <laughs> you know, the truth is, the truth is, with, with anything to do with Huey or Tyson, forget what you hear here say, whatever Peter Fury says, that goes. Don't hear from anybody else. And um, when Peter hears, you'll all hear. That's that's a, that's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure. Listen, the man ain't sleeping. He wants to give. See, Peter's a people's person. He wants to give people real boxing fights. He's sick. He's not into these journeyman fights, you know. But he's got no other option when nobody wants to fight him because he knows he's got to keep his son busy. He's promised to date, and Peter will never let or go back against his word. But these heavyweights, they're just a farce. What about Tackham? Would you would you guys entertain Tackham? Oh, yeah, definitely. Whoever, yeah. Whoever, yeah. Who, why not? It's a good fight. Anyone well, in the top 15 would, for Huey right now, I'd like to see. But yeah. would, Tackham, would Tackham's people want to risk it against Huey? Well, that's the problem, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll all be gunning for Joshua because of the fact they'll, they'll get a reward for it with Huey. He's potentially more of a risk than Joshua with barely any reward. That's the problem. With, with the Huey's bottom Huey. line is Huey... Is not in it for the money. The rest are in it for the money. They've, they've been invested. It's like a great game to get in. Right, let's get a heavyweight. Let's get him 20, 10 bombs, and he'll be worth a lot of money. You can sell him to the next, right. you know, the high spinner. I know this sounds a, this sounds really silly to say, it, but in terms of exposure and in terms of excitement, Shannon Briggs. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 I'll, I'll just, just quickly let me laugh a second, but hold on. Oh, oh, go, go, go ahead. I was just going to come in and say when we spoke to Peter again, we actually asked him about Shannon Briggs, and right. Peter said it's not. He said they, they take that fight because of the ranking. Briggs yeah. is ranked number four, but it's not going to happen next because Briggs doesn't isn't going to entertain the fight apparently. But talking about Briggs, talking about Briggs, yeah, you're yeah. in a no win situation. You beat him, he's old. You lose to him, you know yeah. he's back. You know he's, yeah. you're in a no win situation. Yeah, and it, to be honest with you, it doesn't prove anything. Well, does that make sense? Well, well, it, it does. It doesn't. It, it, it proves that if you're fighting Briggs and you get hit in the chin by Briggs and you, and you stay on your feet, it proves you can take a shot. But yeah, you know, it proves that because we know Briggs in the first two to three rounds is dangerous, dangerous, yeah, right. and that's against right. any of the heavyweights. And I'd put him in with anyone in the world in the first two to three rounds. I'd give Briggs yeah. a, a puncher's chance. After that, it's your, your plain sailing. But you've got to get past those three rounds. Shannon, Listen, Shannon Briggs is not going to land on Huey Fury. He's not going to land on I, Huey Fury. It's too slow. I would for Shannon Briggs. I think he's going to have a heart attack. When Look at his interviews. It looked like he's going to just collapse with a heart attack. <laughs> he's too <laughs> slow. He's too slow. He's too slow. He's packing. Like, he's, he's, I, I mean, I don't, I don't like to speculate, but you look at the shape of the guy. He's juicing, and he's too slow to land on. He's got the power, but he's too slow. Briggs has never yeah, had hand speed. Look, doesn't look good, does it? Well, I would disagree if Briggs not having hand speed. Maybe at this age, you play the hand speed. That's what I'm saying. Listen, That's what I'm saying. If yeah. Shannon Briggs really wants to fight, fight Eddie Chambers. He's there. He wants a good fight. They're all oh, full of it. That's a good fight. I've got an exactly. interview with Eddie Chambers tomorrow, so I'll ask him about it. Okay. Listen, Eddie's no the chance. boy, man. I've got a feeling Eddie's actually going to fight here. I've just got some feeling he's going to fight him. I don't know I, if it'll happen. I keep seeing that in my mind. Hey, 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 Chambers. It's like, it's like a, a fight night like champion thing. It's a good not fight. A not a chance. Good fight, but it's not going to happen. Eddie's too fast, too fit, and he'll just do, dissect him and destroy him. Oh, one That's, question, quickly, guys. Because I, I, I said this to Eddie Chambers a while uh, I think it was about a year ago. Uh, I do like Deontay Wilder, but I just feel like Eddie Chambers would, would, would absolutely school Deontay Wilder, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Deontay Wilder's not going to deal know, with that. With Deontay Wilder, I like Deontay Wilder. You know, and I'll tell you why I like him. Forget his boxing thing. I, I like him because he went through a struggle. You know, with his with his, with his kid, his daughter was ill yeah. or some sort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. And so you know what it is? I want him to make some money because when a man's been through that struggle and he's still focused on his boxing, still going through all that struggle with his family life, and look how he's rewarding his brother. He's he's been loyal to those who've helped him. You know, God bless the brother. You know what it is? I really do wish he has a super fight against Tyson. And they yeah. both make a lot of money. I don't that think he'll last, but I do like Deontay Wilder. That, that, will happen. Happen. that will happen at the end of the year if, if Tyson uh, beats Vlad and Wilder somehow gets past Povetkin. I think that will happen at the end of the year. I can't see him get past Povetkin, to be honest with you. I, 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 I mean, 
I, I can't. I pick Povetkin, but I don't rule Wilder out. I really don't. I yeah, really he's do always, not. He's always got that equaliser, hasn't he? So you can't yeah, rule him out. That, that equaliser you talk about, you should be concerned because he hit Sp- Spilka with everything. And the right hand that he actually knocked Spilka out is because Spilka was running forward into a shot and he was tired. But you look yeah. at all the big right hands he caught Spilka with early in the fight and Spilka was standing on his feet, which tells you that Wilder's punch power is slightly overrated. I mean, the punch, well, he, he, if yeah. you look at the punch that knocked, that knocked uh, Spilka out, is Spilka was running in, didn't see the shot coming, and it was a short 16 shot. Yeah, well, yeah big I mean, it... booming shots he was being hit with. He could see he was he was taking on chin and he was coming forward. So yeah. I was discussing that last night with uh, Joe and Beam about Deontay Wilder's power because I mean if you if you're talking about his power, okay, he's 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 knocked out all these opponents. But if yeah. you go before Blaine Stavern, all the fighters he fought, he should be knocking out. He basically went on a 30 fight ro- streak of. Guys that Andy Joshua's been fighting in his first six fights. I mean, if you compare Joshua's first 15 fights to Deontay Wilder's 15 fights, yeah. you take Andy Joshua's resume. You know what I'm saying? Deontay Listen. Wilder, the 30 guys he knocked out before, before Brian Stavern, he was supposed to knock out. You can't take anything away from from them. Oh, he, he was supposed to knock them out. Yeah. 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 But what? But Svilka, uh, Duhapas, and, Gast- and, and was it Molina? He had trouble. We had trouble knocking him out. This is yeah. what I'm saying. And so, is it the punch power that's that's lessening? Is it the punch power that's overrated? So or technique, the caliber of the guy is getting better? He has the bang. It's just the, it's just the poor technique behind it. That's the problem yeah. with Deontay Wilder. I yeah. call it the bow and arrow technique. But then there you go. It could be a combination of a lot of the things, though. Like obviously the the the, the caliber of the opposition. He's it could be a lot of things, isn't it? We we, we don't know what the power's going to be like until he, he gets in there against someone who's actually solid. Well. He helped, he helped box to end, didn't we? But we, we know Bermain wasn't well going in that fight by uh, all accounts. So we don't actually know what the power's like. You know what I mean? If Bermain was ill, de- dehydrated and that going in, going in that bout, Deontay should have took him out then, really. This is what, final final comment on me on this subject. Yeah. This is yeah, this is boxing. You know I'm saying like Deontay Wilder is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, once the fighters step up, if they're not good enough, they'll get found out. And, mm-hmm. and Deontay Wilder, that's what we're talking about, Deontay Wilder. He stepped up the competition. It's only top 20 heavyweights, and he's slowly unravelling. And, you know what I'm saying? And, and it, like I said, if you're not good enough in boxing, you're going to get found out eventually. You'll meet your man. Can I ask you all one question? Yeah. Be you honest know? now. Huey Fury. Who do you think can beat him, apart from Tyson Fury? Be honest. Be, be honest with Don't me. He's have a chance, I think. Who? Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz stands a chance. King Kong. King Kong, you on about? Yeah. 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 He's so chance. fat and ugly. He, oh, listen, let's be honest. Forget him. He was a comic. Hey, I say he'd have a chance. He's a comic. Him, you know? I think he's brilliant. I think he's a good King fighter. Kong. Yeah. Listen, you check my tweets he's before you even had the fight. Everybody Peter wrote, everybody wrote him off. And I, I said, know. look, I love him. Because he's so funny. He's Listen, Oscar Del Hoy is guiding him right. Yeah. You know, you can make anyone look good, but my point is, let's be honest, he's got a chance, just like um, Ollie Harrison's got a chance of coming back and... It's heavyweight he boxing. It. Yeah. Right, there's another guy who I think slipped under the radar, uh, Robert Hellanius. No. Hey, no, no, he's a good fight. Listen, don't knock him, don't that's knock all. Hellenius, man. Hellenius don't knock not. him, you can't. He's got a good can't. jab, nice right hand. I'm not, I'm, not knocking him. I'm not knocking him, I'm just saying he does not beat Huey Fury, that's all I'm saying. He definitely not doesn't beat Huey Fury. I'm not I'm saying it's a bad you, point. I'm, not saying I'm it's bad honestly point. telling you, there's nobody beating Huey Fury. I'm saying this, I'm telling everyone, he is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Remember this when I'm old, you'll say, as he was right. I'll say, I'll say this, and I hope you are I'm, right. I'm, I'm high on Huey Fury. I've always been high on Huey Fury. The, the thing is with Huey Fury, what we're talking about right now isn't the finished article. He's like, he's, he's, you know, they're still rubbing, yeah. rubbing, the, rubbing the sides of Huey Fury. So we don't know. Asky, you've been around him. You've seen him spar. You know more than what we know. But at the minute, we're impressed with what he, what he, what we see from him. So it's, it's scary, kind of scary thinking of how good he could be once he's developed that yeah. manpower when he reaches his prime me, in ten years. Let me check yeah. a guy in there uh, that I that I know. Should he win the WBO cruiserweight title, will move up to heavyweight. Usyk, Alexander Usyk, moving up to heavyweight. Boxing at heavyweight. How does he do against Huey Fury? I mean, to the thing is, I mean, I'll, I'll quickly say this. I mean, right now, the problem is with Usk. I rate Usk, and obviously we, we've seen what he's done. Yeah. The problem is right now, I mean, we're talking about potentially what he could do at heavyweight. We've not even seen him at the top level of cruiserweight. He might be another one. I know he's got the pedigree. Yeah, yeah I've, 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 got, I've got, I've got, I'm sure I've got some footage of him. 
Yeah. He's a very, very good player. He's point, so right? predictable. He's not, you know, he looks, they've made him to look good. You can see his point is coming a mile away. Not, I, I, not, I not do Huck, you know. Us, Us is the guy. Yeah, he? that's what I'm on about. That's the one Us, who's trained by Bashir at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I've got videos of him. He's, he's been highly invested in. Okay. Alexander Usk, Alexander Usk, he's very light on his feet. I think, I think I've done a video about him. No, he's just too amateurish. Style, his style's too amateurish. He's, he, he's a very powerful fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, he's not powerful at all. You can see them shots coming a mile away. Listen, them like kind of guys are too like amateurish. Good. They want to look good. Listen, this is heavyweight boxing. All I say this, is, right, all these top cruiserweights, Tony Bellew said it himself, he says, if there's one cruiserweight I don't want to go near, it's Alexander Usk. These cruiserweights don't want to go near him. And, and, and you've, got to, you've got to take something from that, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? If these no, other cruiserweights listen, say, listen, I don't listen. want to fight him. As a fighter, and I'll never I understand that any fighter that will say, I will never fight this, it's degrading. If you've if you got that mentality, you shouldn't be in the game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Then, definitely, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like the fact they're saying that shows mm. that they're saying in Alexander Usk. Oh, he was my prospect of the year last year. I, I, I mean, obviously, you never know, Asko. You might be right. He may end up getting found out. He may get beat by Glowacki. You never know. He once he do. steps up to that level, he might get found out. Like I said, he's let, another... It, a, until, a until, until, until that happens, let's just focus on the heavyweights, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Until these guys are proven... And let's just talk about that domestic level. Let's talk about domestic level. Dave Allen's fighting Taos, yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great fight. A great. Yep. This is going to set a lot of, send a lot of messages out, and I think the winner should fight David Price, just to clear up the few. Yeah. yeah, and then David Price then calls out AJ. And so while Tyson deals with um, Wilder, and then eventually build up the winner out of David Price and AJ fights Huey Fury. Mm-hmm. That will be a great fight. That will send a lot of messages. Anyone actually out. heard of um, these sparring stories? I don't know if they're actually. Oh, well, you hear a lot of sparring stories. The one you're uh, involving AJ and Price. Has anyone yeah. heard that? Yeah. Price knocked him out. Price knocked. Him, I was. I, I was uh, quite close to that, and Price did knock him out in sparring. It was the week that he fought uh, the guy called Webb. Nick Price. Webb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He fought I, I, Webb. He, he got knocked Webb. out in sparring, um, and that was also around the time, if I'm correct, that. Usnov got knocked out in sparring cold by Derek Chisora. Webb? Who mm-hmm. fought Webb? Mm-hmm. Yep, he got knocked out cold in sparring and um, it was really kept quite quiet. That was, I mean, that's, that's that was, why... I mean, it kind of adds up because that might be why David Price was so confident about that fight, you know that's what I'm saying? saying. And, and, and also... He was called with AJ out, wasn't he? The, 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 you know, the ringside after one of his fights. I remember that. He was pointing at him, you know. I remember that. Yeah, hey, take yeah. nothing away from David Chisora. He's a he's a very good fighter. That's what I'm saying. I, I like Price Chisora. I do like that fight. No, that, that doesn't. I sound do like me. that fight. I think I, I, well, you never know. Even I mean Chisora. I, I wouldn't mind Dylan White against either of them guys next. You know what I'm saying? No, I think we'll, White takes we'll, care we'll of him. We'll see how good Dylan White is. We've got to see him first come back and how he's he to lose weight. If he loses some weight, gets into shape, it'll be a force. Dylan White. Dylan White. Yeah, yeah I think it. so. I think he would. I wonder how much to shed that weight. Was actually got... you know, with that shoulder problem. I wonder if, if the shoulder was 100. percent Could he have got got an edge out of there? You know. I think he's just. Sh- I think he's just. He needs to shed some weight. That's the problem. You know, he, he's yeah. very. If he gets into shape. But you see, the thing with that, Cameron, is when you shed weight and you lose weight, there's always a possibility that you may lose some form of durability as well, because there's yeah. some fighters when they look. Lo- you see guys who shift a lot of weight, and the durability goes with it. That. I don't know, Asgar, maybe you can jump in on this one. You put muscle on as well. You're 100% right. Who's Dylan Moyes' trainer? It's Jonathan Banks, right? I'll ask you guys this a question. I'll I'll ask you, Ingram, actually. So he's with Jonathan Banks. Yeah. So I like Jonathan Banks, but what's he in a training career? I don't think he's a good trainer I'm just about to say that. He's terrible. That's that's what I'm just about to come out to, right? He's taken over from what Emmanuel Stewart done with Vladimir Kitschko. He He just kept Vladimir doing his fundamentals, right? So what I'm saying is, Dylan White would be a good... Partnership with Bashir, in my opinion. Good, good point. Uh, I wonder, there's three things I'm going to say here. First, you can blame, you could blame, you could put right outside the door of Jonathan Banks why Klitschko looked as terrible as he has looked. I know Tyson did a tremendous performance with reach and and and, and balance and distance and timing. That's great from Tyson's side, but from Klitschko's side, the uh, there are certain things he did not do in training, and I can tell you firsthand that Klitschko did not do in training that he should have done. And 
while you're following the steps of Emmanuel Stewart doing the same things over and over and over again the thing is you're not adjusting it to the fighters that you're fighting I will leave it as that Ingram yeah I, I, I'll say this and, and you may not may, people here may not agree but I do think if, if Manuel Stewart was in the corner of, of Vladimir Klitschko against Tyson Fury Vladimir would have got knocked out because, and I'll say this mm. because when Tyson was when he was ahead and he mm. got into later rounds a steward would be on his case tending to be more aggressive to go for the KO and, and he would have got knocked out himself that, that's what that, I think that's a, that's a valid point there but the, the skills of Vladimir Klitschko would never have eroded to the point where they got here let's put it this way Emmanuel Stewart would have changed things up in, in, in training camp and would not allow Vladimir to use the same same technique or the same style for every opponent whether it be tall short could you he know, though? I mean, but could he though? Because Vladimir's always been. If you take away the few things he had defensively, he's never had anything else to fall back on. I agree, but then you, you, it's the difference between the author and the somebody who thinks they're the author. Do you understand? When you when, yeah, it's, yeah, the actual, yeah. when it's the original guy that's put the plan and put the star together, they can say, well, okay, this is what you need to be doing more on training. Whether it be working more the heavy bag, whether you need to work in top quality sparring partners, whether it be because remember you've got Banks' experience. In boxing, then you've got Emmanuel Stewart's experience. Emmanuel Stewart would lean upon people like Bashir and other top trainers, their experience. Emmanuel Stewart, the myth is Emmanuel Stewart did everything by himself. The fact is, Emmanuel Stewart had a damn good team around him, and he had the likes of Bashir and other names that he turned to that you don't hear about that Bashir, that, that Stewart went to and got the knowledge and worked with as a team. Which Stewart was a genius because he had other guys in the corner and other guys around to help him to have a phenomenal team which he had that's why oh, yeah. it was as good as he was because he had other guys guys you don't really talk about but you know historically can i can i just trainers. say can i just say something go ahead maybe it was just a case of peter fury had a master plan and he exposed he showed him i am the king of the castle now you old timers move aside i'm here it's fury's time listen Take nothing away from Klitschko's. Mm-hmm. They were at, they was at the best. There was no excuses, as he said in his interview. I've not, you know, I've I've done everything right. Absolutely. When I was injured, I took a break. I'm hundred percent. So you can say blame whatever you want. Mm. At the end of the day, he got schooled. Let's make no mistake, he got schooled. Oh, absolutely. Now, let me tell you, Klitschko's biggest downfall. He believes he is bigger than the team. The team is, should be bigger than the individual. Agreed. Look at Team Fury. Peter will never let the fighter be bigger than the, the team. Why did Tyson do so well? Because Peter made sure him and his team were on the ball. Klitschko dictates his training. I agreed. And that's his downfall. That's his downfall this era of and Klitschko. So can, I, yes. can I just say, can I just say, Klitschko knows Bashir is far, far more superior than Jonathan Banks. But mm-hmm. well, he's got Jonathan Banks there. Why? Because he's a yes man. Uh, there and you that's go. why. I've yeah, said exactly. It. I've said it. Exactly, I've said it. Mate. Yeah, I've on. said it. Exactly. So you're saying exactly the points there, but I just want to add to mention that because I know other people will be listening to this and there are a lot of people that believe that Emmanuel Stewart did it all by himself, which he didn't. Um, all I'll say is, uh, go ahead. Yeah, all I'll say is, like, uh, you know, I mean, Emmanuel Stewart was, uh, in my opinion, you know, he was a great man. It's not even the fact that boxing is missing him as a trainer. I'm saying like HBO... As a pundit, you know, I love listening yeah. to him doing the corner fights. So I think, you know, it's kind of, you know, God bless Emmanuel yeah. Stewart. You know, it's a massive loss to boxing. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ramsey, are you still there? Yes, they very bad. Yeah, brother. I'm listening to you guys chatting, chatting, chatting like women. Okay, so what, are you going to jump in and say anything, Ramsey? Well, um, what do you want me to say? This was supposed to be, this was, I mean, this was, this was supposed to be Frampton Quigg, right? I don't it know, was, and it will be. We'll mentioned. get to it. What do you want me? To, what do you want me to say about uh, about all this? I don't know. You tell me. Listen, well, let me let me let me have a final say before Ramsey kicks in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The king, the king of the castle. This is the bottom line. The king of the castle is Tyson Fury. The future's bright. The future's Huey Fury. True. Right now, the top dog is Peter Fury. So whatever anybody wants to say, it's a Fury thing. We've not done it the easy way. We've not been gifted anything. We've done it the hard way. You've heard as Drake sang, we started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Um, no, I don't think I think Floyd Mayweather Sr. would have given you a pat on the back and said, well done. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather would, would, 
unless he'd say the thing is, if you asked uh, Floyd Senior about Tyson, he'd say he wouldn't beat my son. <laughs> <laughs> he probably, yeah, he probably. Uh, Ramsey, so what did you want to add to that? Well, there's not much to say to be honest. It's just that it's the, uh, it's all about the Fury era now. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to say. Uh, Don't be sorry. Uh, all this, but um, to be honest, uh, the fury is going to reign for a very, very long time. It's not because we're in Team Fury. It's because <laughs> we see it because we see the amount of training, the hard work, the de- dedication.